Hello, and welcome to this video log, where I'm excited to show how smart panels have come to the Acumatica mobile ERP app. In Acumatica ERP version 2021 R1, my name is Brian Stevens, and I'm with CTEC Supply Chain Solutions, LLC. First of all, before we can get too excited about smart panels coming to the mobile app, we need to know what are smart panels. Well, as you can see on the, uh, on the screen here, we have a little pop-up, and this particular pop-up is one we're going to build in just a moment. Um, within the mobile app. It won't quite look the same way in the mobile app itself, but this is within the website using a browser how this particular smart panel looks. And what the smart panel does is it gives us a way to be able to interrupt the flow of activity within the system to prompt the user to be able to give some sort of input. In this particular case, it, obviously we want to add a tag and we're going to ask what's the customer, who's the contact, and then you'll see that the OK button that's grayed out in that picture will, uh, will enable, and then you'll be able to continue on. And of course, from there, the tag would then be created. To do that, in the previous versions of the mobile app with Acumatic ERP 2020 R2 and before, there was a way to do something similar, but it involved some very, very tedious workarounds, and it wasn't very intuitive. Uh, you would create a, a container that would then open up like any other container and ask for the input. And it just, it, it wasn't nearly as convenient um, and as conducive to the standard flow of work as the new smart panel is within the mobile app. So without much ado, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we are on Acumatica 2021 version R1. This particular build is 21.106.0024, recently released. You can get it on builds.acumatica.com. So to be able to do this, what we've started with is just a, a standard sales demo installation. There's really nothing in here except the sales demo and a, a couple of little screens that I've added in just for the purpose of being able to do this demo to keep everything very, very clean. So we're gonna go over into blog samples and take a quick look. We have the stocked items screen has been added here for convenience, but we've added this thing called tag. The tag is going to allow us to be able to simply capture some tag. Um, a customer may bring a part back to you and you want to put a tag on it before you put it on a shelf to be reviewed. And so you might want to gather some information. In this particular case, this tag is for a uh, Harville four foot hair hockey table and it's uh, the customer was Dunkirk Realty and the contact was Kirk Cam. Well, it's very easy to go into Acumatic into a screen and put that information in, but sometimes you're looking for the part before you create the tag. And so your flow of work may actually be to go at the stocked item screen, go find your item, in which case we'll just pick this random item for cotton, and you may go into action to create a tag. This is the smart panel that pops up. It's prompting us while we're trying to create a tag for the item that we are on, it's prompting us for a customer and a contact. Now I'm just gonna pick a customer here at the top. I'm gonna to pick the contact for that customer and you can see how the OK button has enabled. And so we'll hit OK and that will create a tag for us. Now in, inside of the, the uh, website, it's going to take us over to the tag. We're not gonna go into those depths on the mobile app. We're just gonna, gonna look at getting the smart panel itself there and then you can continue to expand that as we go. But you can see on the tag, we have a new tag numbered for, um, and it is for this cotton, and is for the customer we selected, and Amelia Armstrong we selected as a contact. So to do those types of things, we're gonna wanna be able to do that within the mobile app. Um, as we know, the, in the mobile world, it's very convenient. People kind of, can, kind of feel that as an extension of themselves. You see people walk around with a phone in their hands, and they look down at the phone more than they look up in some cases. But there's always a mobile device in a lot of people's hands. So whereas in the past we used to sit on the couch and watch TV or we'd get up and walk over to a phone, people pretty much have this thing attached as an appendage. So it's become a very natural part of how people function. Well, Acumatic is great to give us a mobile app. The mobile app isn't something we have to create ourselves, it's just something we have to configure to take advantage of a lot of the features within the mobile, in the Acumatic ERP standard website. And as you can see, I have the mobile app here, and we're gonna scroll down, and just at a quick glance, we can see we don't have the stocked item screen 
that we're, we were working from a moment ago, and we don't have this tag screen that was created. So we're going to want to get that rectified pretty quickly because within the mobile app, you have to actually extend the screens and the logic that's in the website into the mobile app to expose it. That's a little bit great and a little bit bad because it means you have a great control over how much information is being pumped to someone's mobile device, as well as the ability to, to streamline what data is, is put there for them to interact with. Whereas on the, the website, you may have a, a great amount, amount of information you want them to be able to see and work with. On a mobile app, a lot of times you just need to be able to see the highlights. Um, I have a, an employee has requested time off, so here's the, who the employee is, here's the time off, and let me see those details, let me approve it and move on. Well, in the mobile app, for whatever reason, Acumatica didn't feel it was necessary to put the stocked items on. Um, but in my particular case, our company manages indirect materials for large companies, so we're very accustomed to working within the Material Master as our primary focus. So the first thing we need to do is to add that stocked item screen. So I'm going to hop back over to Acumatica and go into my customization project. And I'm going to cheat a little bit with a little copy and paste um, as we do this. But first of all, we want to add the stocked item screen. And so we're going to go down to mobile application within the customization project, and we're going to customize update, uh, update main menu. And when that pops up, we'll see there's nothing here. This site map uh, on the, in the main panel is where we get to update it. Now you'll see on the right side, that's what's already defined. So all the things that we were seeing a moment ago in the mobile app, this is the definition within the, the uh, mobile application. Well, I'm going to hop back over into my editing window and I'm going to paste all of my nice little stuff in here that I, excuse me, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm going to grab the uh, configure the definitions for my screens and we're going to add to the site map the stocked item screen and this tags screen that was created in the system. Now we all know the stocked item screen is IN202500 and I've given it a little bookmark as the icon just to make it something different from what's already there. And then for tags, I'm using the icon ticket and my custom screen is ZZ301000. And so I'm not getting into those details. There is a, uh, there is a, a training that you can take if you want to get into a lot more details of how to do these basic things within the mobile app. But let me get that saved and that's going to put those items on the menu. Now that doesn't mean that they're going to be accessible yet because we haven't actually told the mobile app how to, to represent those pages, but they are now on the menu. So then I'm going to go back to my mobile application and we're going to, that uh, screen capture I had just a moment ago, we're going to, if I hit the right button, We're going to customize where we update an existing screen. In this case, IN202500. I'm sorry, that's actually not in the site map yet. It is an existing screen in Acumatica, but it's not in the site in the mobile app yet. So we're going to add a new screen, IN202500. And we'll hit OK. And now as you can see in our preview, there's nothing there. That's because again, Acumatica did not by default define that screen for us. Now you can go in and, and put whatever information on this screen makes you happy. But in my case, I'm just gonna, gonna go in and do uh, some very basic uh, displays here. I'm gonna have a, uh, a simple header uh, format where I'm putting an inventory ID and I want to show the, the uh, inventory CD value instead of the description. You know the selector for inventory ID has a descriptor, a description field of the description of the inventory ID. So we want to see this inventory CD value instead. So we're going to tell it selector display format key and that's going to override the selector that's been defined to say, hey, go ahead and give me the actual CD value, the one that people are used to looking at, the code. And 
then I'm going to have a place to be able to insert and save and cancel if we want to do some changes there. Not that we're going to do any of that, but just, uh, just a, a basic placeholder for the stocked item screen. Now I'm going to go back to the mobile application and I'm going to customize and add another new screen. In this case, it's Z0, uh, 30, 10, 0, 0. And that's the, our custom tag screen that's been added. And again, the result preview has nothing in there. So I'm going to paste this in. And this is simply going to be a container called document. And that's been defined um, within the, within the, the uh, Visual Studio project. Uh, that is the view is called document. And you can see that from the WDSL schema as well, um, looking at the service description. But we're going to put the tag ID, the description, and the inventory ID showing the code value, uh, again, the override like we did a moment ago. A description, customer, and contact. Um, now this is just going to let us look at the the tag itself. It's not actually going to uh, to put our smart panel in. It's just giving us the place to be able to set it up to see what's happening. So now that these three things are added, our menu is updated and our two screens have been defined, we're going to publish our project. Now it'll take just a moment. And once that project publishes, we'll be able to refresh our mobile app. And to do that, we can simply go in and change to a, a different company or a different branch. Just going to wait for that to finish updating. And now I'm just going to pick this retail site, again, out of demo data. And just for grins and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on Capital because that's where I'm working. Now as we scroll down we'll see we have stocked items with a bookmark icon and tags with a little ticket. So let's take a quick look at the stocked item screen and see what we've done. Make sure all that worked for us. Ah, and so we have a list, just very basic details of some stocked items. I'm going to take a look at our first one and we can see we have an attachment over here as a, as a built-in feature and it has the picture here. We actually can add things. That's just some of the great things that come with the mobile app. But we just have very, very basic information about our stocked item. You'll notice that there is no other access here to be able to do anything yet. Again, we haven't added our action. We've just very simply defined very basic details about that stocked item. Now I'm going to go back and take a look at our tag screen, make sure that looks okay. So on our tag screen, we have, looks like we have four tags that are defined right now. If we take a look at our first tag, again, we have our tag ID, our inventory CD value displayed instead of the description that would by default show and again, we used that selector display format equals key to further define the inventory ID uh, when we were setting up the mobile application. And again, you can also see here, we also have the ability to, to do attachments. So we could do from uh, pictures that are already on our phone or, or tablet, or we could take a picture directly from the camera. But again, nothing really happening here that lets us take advantage of an action. So now we have extended from our our blog, we have the stocked item screen has something represented within the mobile app, which again, you can totally configure to whatever you want to be. And then we also have our tags are extended. Now it's time for us to hop right in and finally get to the meat of this. How do we put the smart panel to create that tag into the mobile app? First of all, let's take a look at our stocked item screen. We're going to need to know a few things about our smart panel. Now in this particular case, it's on the actions menu and we're going to use create tag. So if I do the nice little look up to see what create tag is, it says the action is create tag. When I do create the tag, we're going to get this pop up and we're going to see for our OK button we really don't have much detail, so we'll need to look a little bit deeper in that because this particular one is not a standard dialog of OK. We're going to actually define something custom that works to allow us to be able to enable and disable the OK button. Now that's all already been done within the Visual Studio project. I'm not going to get into those details, but I will show you 
how we find out what that information is so we can, can define it accordingly. So to do that, uh, to, to add our smart panel in, let's actually let Acumatica help, help us out a little bit. We're going to look for smart panel and hop over to help. And it has this nice little entry called mapping a smart panel. Now in mapping the smart panel, it's going to tell us that we need to do a few things. Um, and here it has a, a note about if the action does not have a command name attribute. Well, we're going to look at that in just a moment because our action does have a command name. And that's what we need to look at. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. So in mapping the action of a smart panel, we're going to need to create a record action that will allow us to direct to a new container. And in the help, and I like the way they've done that, in the help they use the screen name and then D1, D2, D3 for each of the dialog boxes that you're, you're defining. So once you've created that, we're going to go in and define the dialog. Now the dialog is the smart panel. So the in this example, they say S, uh, SO 301000D1 is what you're going to redirect to for dialog. So you define that dialog. Now in the help, they're showing you how to do that. If you're using a list type of a dialog, you're going to have filter list screen and open as a list. Now in our case, we're going to still do filter list screen, but we're going to open it as a form because ours is not a grid. Ours is actually asking for particular fields that we're going to fill out, and it's just one record. As we scroll down a little bit more, we can see that we have dialog actions that need to be defined. And so we're going to actually specify what our dialog actions are. And then further down in the later part of the example, we can see that they've updated the screen, they've added a record action, where they're going to redirect to a dialog, and then they've defined the dialog with the dialog actions, and they, they give the uh, container with all the fields that they want to display. Now, one of the things that really bit me when we were getting started, and I want to put a uh, give a shout out to Caesar and the development team at Acumatica, the support team, for uh, for the help here. They use a list action because they are viewing a list. In my case, I'm using a form, and I needed to define a record action. So all the different ways that I tried it didn't work the first time, and thankfully Acumatica support was able to help me with getting the proper format here. So we're going to, in our case, create a record action. But you do have to define that, that action within the container. Even though you've defined the dialog action, you still need to create an action that's going to then expose that to the screen. I know it sounds like a lot of extra steps, but uh, just go, go along with it and make sure you create all these pieces. And again, instead of having a lot of things in the example, we're going to have a very simple example to view in just a moment. So now that we've got a general layout from help to tell us how to do this, we're going to go take a look at our Acumatica schema, at our WDSL schema. So I'm on the stocked items form, not the GI, that's the primary list. We want to look at the form itself. And we're going to go into web service to the service description. Now in the service description, we know that create tag was our action. And you'll see here we have a create tag and a create tag action. Now in my particular case, it happens to be that create tag action is, I believe, the one that we're going to have to, have to use. Um, I had tried create tag before, and uh, that, uh, that didn't work too well for me. So we're going to use the record action of create tag action. If you find yourself struggling with something like that, just remember there may be an action version of your of your action. And so use, if you've tried action, create tag in this case and didn't work, do the create tag action. And you may find yourself working out pretty well. Now, also, we know that that, okay, that add button has an OK button, or the add, add tag form has an OK button, but it has something behind it that we need. So let's hop over to our project again, and let's pull up that screen for the stocked items. We're going to go into our dialog for add tag and take a look at the OK button here at the bottom. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. One, if you're comfortable with viewing the ASPX uh, screen, we can go in and look at that. And you'll see there is, in fact, a command name, check tag params. That's pretty important. And that was actually pointed out in the help as well. As a reminder, we're going to need that information in just a moment. The command name, check tag params. The other way that you can do that is you'll notice it's not shown here when we look at the layout properties. 
That's because it's on it's hidden behind the filter. So I'm going to unfilter and look down at my hidden properties. And we can see I have an auto post back and my command source is DS and my command name is check tag params. Now that lines up with some code back in the Visual Studio project which actually allows the the web form to be able to uh, to dig into the details and see are all the conditions met that we want to enable or disable the OK button. I'm not going to get into those details again. Uh, you can see examples of that like on the sales order screen when you copy a sales order there's a smart panel that pops up to ask you what the, the order type is and a little more information potentially before it enables an OK button. And that's where I actually had used um, as a model to be able to do that myself. But what we need is for the OK button, we need the check tag params. And so I'm going to go back over to our schema, our WSDL schema, and uh, we're looking for check tag params. And we do see it here as an action. So there was our create tag, create tag action, and tucked right in the middle in our case was the, tech, the check tag params. And then the other thing that we're going to need is the things that are actually on that add tags form. So if I look for add tag, we're going to see there is a complex type called add tag that contains a customer and a contact. And so those are the fields that, names that we're going to need to add those to our smart panel when we define that within the Acumatica screen. Now let's pop back over into our mobile application definitions. And we're going to look at the stocked item screen again, where we're going to hit the pencil here because we want to edit the one that's already here. Give that a moment to open. And we're going to want to add, I'm going to start with our dialogue because you really can't add a, uh, the action for the dialogue without having the dialogue. So I'm going to come down to the bottom. And I struggle sometimes with these braces, so hopefully I get this right the first time. But again, a little copy-paste action to make this pretty quick. And what I've done is I've added this little section. And as you can see, it's really not a whole lot of code. But what we have is uh, the dialogue has been added, so we're using the keywords add dialogue, and then IN202500, like the name of our form, and then D1 for dialogue 1. And again, this is type equals filter list screen, and we're going to open it as a form. Again, that's because we aren't using a grid, we're using an actual form, so we're not showing multiple records that we want to allow them to, the user to select from. We're prompting for a couple of pieces of information on a form. So we open as a form. We're going to add a dialog action, and dialog actions are typically OK and cancel. And so you can see we've done that as well for cancel here, and on cancel we want to close the dialog. But we've added a custom dialog action for check tag params. Again, that's because we saw just a moment ago that OK button, the action that we want for OK, is tied to the command name check tag params. We don't have to know all the details behind how that's working within Visual Studio unless we, of course, we're responsible for writing that. But once it's already created and we want to go leverage that just to extend that from the, the website version into the mobile app, we just need to know that it is a custom action that uses dialog. Uh, the, the dialog action's name is check tag params, so we can specify that. And then we're going to come down and create this container, add tag, and we saw that from the schema. We need to make sure that, you, that we tell it include dialog actions equal true. That's very, very important. If you don't put that, you're probably not going to get very far. We need to tell it that type is selection action list, and then we want to specify our fields. In our case, we saw from the schema, it's customer and contact. And here, again, is that last part that I really stumbled with. In the help example, we saw add list action. Again, ours is not a grid. Ours is a form. So we want to use add record action and then check tag params. Check tag params, again, comes back up to the dialogue action that was created up here, which happens to also be the command name that we were using. So we have the, in this, we have the stocked item screen that we saw before, and we have the dialogue. If I save this, which I'll go ahead and do now just for good measure, if I save this and publish it, we still don't get to see our smart panel. We've defined it, but we haven't actually created a way to access that. So let's do that now by adding an additional record action. We have save and cancel, 
and so I'm going to come right below save and cancel and you'll notice I let that major brace end after the record actions before I start the dialog so we're coming back into the container up here for stocked item summary and I'm going to add a record action for create tag action again I have a create tag and create tag action that showed in the schema but that's the one that actually works for us I can put the name what I, whatever I want it to be in this case I said create tag and I want it to redirect so if you select this action I want to redirect to this dialog so we use redirect to dialog and the name of the dialog that we created just a moment ago down below so now when I save this we'll see in our preview over here all that information has been combined fortunately we have no errors now which is good we have a redirect to dialog and going to publish that and of course that'll take just a moment so what we're going to see hopefully if everything worked out right is we're going to be able to go to our stocked item screen just like we did within the website where we could go to the stocked item screen and go into actions to create a tag we should now have a menu option for create tag within the mobile app and that particular menu option should be our smart panel so I'm going to come down to stock items in this case it really doesn't matter what we pick so I'm just going to try to pick a different one this shower kit and now we have the three little dots over here telling us there's more to it so if we click that oh, we see create tag so if we create tag we now have a new panel that opens for add tag I'm going to pick a customer and not all the customers in sales demo have a contact so I'm gonna hope for the best and clearly I picked wrong reminds me of a movie that says you chose poorly try another one okay I'm going to try this again and we're going to pick AA customer because I know that one is there and we'll use Andy Appleton this time because I think last time we used um, we used Amelia so when we come up to our our dots again we have options for OK and cancel I'm going to hit OK and we now have a tag has been created and again I haven't redirected for this just for simplicity I haven't redirected over to the stock to the to the tag screen but our tag is created and so I'm going to come back out I'm going to go into our tags and as we scroll down there was our Amelia Armstrong well here's our shower kit for Andy Appleton so we can see that our tag was in fact created if I come back into stocked items I'm going to pick another stocked item and I'm going to go into create tag and I'd like to be able to, to blink those out which I can't seem to do so let me uh, let me not quit uh, yes I do want to quit without saving I'm going to go in and pick a different location and go back into stocked items and create tag so we see we don't have a customer or a contact in this case we don't have an OK button that's because we had told it through the actions that we wanted to only enable the OK button when customer and contact were filled in and since they aren't filled in yet we don't get an OK button so again if I come in and I tell it here's a customer and we'll pick Amelia again we now have the OK button which now again will create another one another tag so I'll go back and look at our tags and there was our Andy from a moment ago and Amelia now so here we have it in just a few small steps we have the ability to be able to see the smart panel that was defined within the mobile app excuse me defined within the website we have it seen now within the mobile app now I'm going to pull all that information up really quickly to make it very easy to see what that looks like it's really a very very limited amount of, of detail so pop in a notepad plus plus and in reality this is all that we had to add 
into the stocked item screen once it was created. We added within the container stocked item summary, we added a new record action to redirect from our screen that we're in into the dialog. Again, the redirect to dialog, that's our smart panel. We added the smart panel as an add dialog. In our case, we used open as a form, but if you're using a grid, you would use open as list. We added a dialog action for our custom uh, action for OK and for our standard action of cancel. And then we add the container that allows us to put the fields that we wanted to display and prompt for. In this case, we told it was an action, it's a selection action list. We want, made sure that we included include dialog actions equal true. And then we included the record action that points us back to our default OK so that uh, when we actually display that smart panel, we get the button that says OK. Hope this is very educational and hope you enjoy being able to go out and create those smart panels in your, your own mobile apps. Again, it's a great feature with, with 2020 R1. It's something I've been looking forward to expectantly for quite a while. And it's something that as you get into to inserting smart panels within your mobile application, you really are able to, to allow the end user to be able to stop having to, to quit their work, go somewhere and do something, and then come back and pick up where they left off. They actually can naturally do their work, follow the system to whatever their next step is, start an action, allow the system to prompt. They can fill that information in naturally as they're going through their flow of work and then submit it and move right along. So I hope this is very helpful for you and uh, please join us for the next one and have a great day.